Picture this. Deep in the heart of the ocean, where tectonic plates converge, a seismic event begins to unfold. But this isn't just any earthquake. It's a megaquake, a hypothetical seismic monster, the likes of which we've never seen. The concept of a megaquake occurring deep under the ocean poses a scenario of unimaginable proportions. When we talk about earthquakes, we're referring to the energy released when Earth's tectonic plates shift. These plates are massive, rocky slabs that make up Earth's crust, floating over the semi-fluid asthenosphere below. In the depths of the ocean, these plates often meet and interact at boundaries called subduction zones, where one plate dives beneath another. It's at these zones that our hypothetical megaquake would originate. The mechanics of such an event are fascinating yet terrifying. In a megaquake, the energy release would be exponentially greater than that of typical seismic events. For perspective, consider the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, which had a magnitude of 9.1, 9.3. A megaquake could potentially surpass this, reaching magnitudes we've only theorized about. The force of this would be akin to detonating thousands of nuclear bombs simultaneously. The most alarming aspect of a megaquake under the ocean is its potential to displace enormous volumes of water. This displacement is what triggers tsunamis, colossal waves that can travel vast distances across ocean basins. Unlike regular waves, which are surface phenomena caused by wind, tsunamis are a series of powerful energy waves that involve the movement of the entire water column, from the ocean surface to the seafloor. The speed and energy of tsunamis are what make them so destructive. A megaquake-triggered tsunami would travel at speeds up to 700 kilometers per hour, about 435 miles per hour, carrying with it an immense amount of energy. Upon reaching shallower coastal waters, these waves would slow down but grow in height, potentially causing massive destruction when they crash onto land. Understanding the impact of such a megaquake helps in comprehending the scale of devastation it could unleash. We're talking about not just localized destruction along a particular coastline, but a potential series of global impacts. The ripple effect of such an event would be felt across the world, affecting distant shores and populations. Now let's dive into the dynamics of tsunamis, particularly those that could be triggered by a hypothetical megaquake in the ocean. Tsunamis are not your typical waves. They're a series of ocean waves caused by large, abrupt movements on the ocean floor, most commonly due to earthquakes. The magnitude of the tsunami is directly related to the size and nature of the underwater disturbance. In the event of a megaquake, the ocean floor would shift dramatically. This shift is like dropping a giant rock into a pond, but on an unimaginably larger scale. The energy from the earthquake displaces an enormous volume of water, creating waves that begin to radiate outward from the quake's epicenter. These aren't the cresting waves you see at the beach, though. Tsunamis in deep water often appear as a swift, unremarkable rise in sea level, but they carry an incredible amount of energy beneath the surface. As these waves travel across the ocean, their speed is phenomenal, often reaching speeds equivalent to a commercial jet. However, due to their long wavelength, they can be barely noticeable in the open ocean, sometimes only a meter or so in height. It's when they reach shallower waters near coastlines that their true destructive power becomes apparent. Upon approaching the coast, the energy of the wave, which was spread over a greater depth, gets compressed into a much shallower area. The wave slows down, but in doing so, grows in height. This process, known as wave shoaling, can result in towering walls of water. A tsunami from a megaquake could produce waves reaching tens of meters high, obliterating anything in their path. The impact of such a tsunami would be multifold. First, there's the initial wall of water, inundating coastal areas. But tsunamis often come in a series of waves, not just a single event. Subsequent waves can be just as destructive, and the period between waves can be minutes to hours so the danger can persist for an extended time. Furthermore, tsunamis carry debris, uprooted trees, boats, even pieces of buildings, adding to their destructive force. The inundation of salt water can devastate the local ecology, ruin agricultural land, and compromise freshwater sources. And in urban areas, the impact would be catastrophic, with potential loss of life, collapse of infrastructure, and long-term economic impacts. While a megaquake and its ensuing tsunami are hypothetical scenarios, history is replete with instances of devastating seismic events in the ocean and their catastrophic consequences. 
These historical disasters offer crucial lessons about the power of nature and our preparedness for such events. Consider the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami, one of the deadliest natural disasters in recorded history. With a magnitude of 9.1, 9.3, it was an undersea megathrust earthquake that triggered a series of tsunamis, reaching up to 30 meters in height. The waves hit the coasts of several countries bordering the Indian Ocean, causing unprecedented destruction. Over 230,000 people lost their lives and entire communities were wiped out. This tragedy highlighted the need for robust early warning systems for tsunamis, as many of the affected regions had little to no warning of the approaching waves. Another historical example is the 1960 Valdivia earthquake in Chile, the most powerful earthquake ever recorded, with a magnitude estimated at 9.5. This event caused a series of tsunamis that affected not just the immediate area, but also distant shores, including Hawaii, Japan, the Philippines, and even the west coast of the United States. The far-reaching impact of these tsunamis underscored the global nature of such disasters. In Japan, a country with a long history of seismic activity, the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami offer a stark reminder of the ongoing threat posed by undersea earthquakes. Despite Japan's advanced tsunami warning systems and preparedness, the 9.0 magnitude earthquake and subsequent tsunami caused significant loss of life and triggered the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster. These historical events teach us several critical lessons. First, they underscore the importance of global monitoring systems for seismic activity, particularly in tsunami-prone regions. Early detection and warning are crucial in mitigating the impact of tsunamis and saving lives. Now let's ponder the aftermath of a hypothetical super tidal wave, a scenario that extends beyond immediate destruction. Such an enormous wave would not only dramatically alter coastlines, but also potentially reveal secrets long hidden beneath the ocean's surface. The receding waters of a super tidal wave could expose areas of the seabed that have been submerged for centuries, potentially unveiling lost artifacts and ancient structures. In the wake of this colossal wave, as the waters retreat back into the ocean, they could uncover remnants of human history that have been swallowed by rising sea levels over millennia. Imagine ancient coastal settlements, prehistoric ceremonial sites, or even entire cities that were lost to the sea now briefly revealed. These could include structures from periods like the last ice age, when sea levels were significantly lower and human civilizations thrived closer to what is now the ocean floor. Archaeologically, this would be a treasure trove of information. Artifacts, tools and remains of ancient structures could offer invaluable insights into human history and prehistoric life. For instance, the discovery of submerged stone tools and structures could challenge our understanding of early human migration patterns and technological advancements. However, the scenario also presents significant challenges. The window of opportunity to study these exposed sites might be incredibly brief, as the ocean would eventually reclaim these areas. Moreover, the force of the receding water could also scatter or destroy these fragile remnants making it crucial for archaeologists and researchers to rapidly document and recover what they can. The environmental impact of such an event would also be profound. The displacement of vast amounts of ocean water and sediment could disrupt marine ecosystems, impacting fish populations, coral reefs and other marine life. The change in coastal geography could lead to new patterns of water circulation and temperature, potentially affecting global weather patterns. Moreover, the aftermath of a super tidal wave would pose significant questions about the impact of rising sea levels and climate change. The brief exposure of these submerged sites would serve as a stark reminder of the dynamic nature of our planet's geography and the ongoing shifts that shape our world. Now let's consider the cascading geological consequences that could follow a super tidal wave. This mammoth wave, triggered by a megaquake, could potentially set off a series of other natural disasters, creating a domino effect of geological turmoil. Firstly, consider the immense amount of energy released by a super tidal wave. As it crashes onto shorelines, it could destabilize landmasses, leading to landslides or even triggering volcanic activity. The intense pressure and shock exerted by the water, especially in geologically sensitive areas, could activate dormant volcanoes or aggravate existing volcanic activity. Moreover, 
the seismic force that causes a super tidal wave could itself be a precursor to further seismic events. The initial megaquake could destabilize faults in the vicinity, leading to aftershocks or even new earthquakes. In some cases, this could mean seismic activity in areas that are not typically prone to such events, catching populations unprepared. Another potential aftermath could be the formation of sinkholes, particularly in regions with soluble rock like limestone. The force of the water, combined with changes in pressure and the physical movement of the ground, could lead to the sudden collapse of these areas, forming sinkholes. And as always, we hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching.